Oh, that sounds like blasphemy. Wendy's gonna hurt the children. I want that man arrested immediately. You can't do that, sir. This is America. Sir, this is a Wendy's drive through uh, all I thing you have to fear is for yourself. Our time. The only salvation is to be good. It's my good sir, to be good. The Middle East provides lots of myth and fairy tales about cow and bull born mushrooms, but Europe is the source for much of what we consider the pine amanita lore. Like for instance the Norse gods, such as Thor, who hold similar spears or swords as the South American idols and also have bull horns at the same time. All sorts of tales that relate to snow and reindeer come from these parts of the world, tales like Santa Claus for instance. The concept of Santa Claus comes from several sources. In Slavic mythology, Perun is a thunder and lightning deity. The axe of Perun is kind of like a hammer, similar to the Thor's hammer, a relic of the ancient world that people still collect today. We went over how thunder and lightning were believed to cause the growth of mushrooms, the relationship between the oak tree and Hercules bat hitting the ground to cause thunder, the oak being a conifer is where the amanitas grow, Perun is an eagle that lives in a tree, and his arch nemesis is a serpent or dragon that lives at the base named Velus. This is pretty much the same as the Sumerian stories of the bird and serpent pitted in a constant war against each other. In Norse mythology, as told in the Edda, Midgard is the central theme, and the land of the giants where all creation is made from Ymir the giant. The world tree, called Yggdrasil, represents the Garden of Eden. At the base is a serpent called Jormungandr. Briefly, the Norse creation story begins of Ymir's flesh. The earth was fashioned, and of his sweat the sea, crags of his bones, trees of his hair, and his skull the sky. Then of his brows, the blithe god made Midgard for sons of men, and of his brain, the bitter mooded clouds were all created. This is very similar to the Hindu story of Manu, the first man, and the Mexican creation stories of Quetzalcoatl. In fact, it's pretty much the same as all creation stories around the world. The giant Narfi had sons and daughters named Night and Day. All father peopled the world of Asgard and at one point took Night and her son Day and gave them two horses and two chariots and sent them into the heavens to ride round the, about the earth. Night rides before with a horse named Frosty Mane, and each morning he bedews the earth with the foam from his bit. Notice the word bedews hinting at mushrooms. This is part of the origin of the Santa Claus story. These horses are the reindeer, and they pass over the Rainbow Ridge to get to Asgard, the land of the giants, the North Pole. There are elves at the North Pole, remember? Little people living among giants. The Amanita muscaria mushroom is unique in that it causes the shaman or adventurer to experience something called macropsia or micropsia, where objects appear much larger or smaller than they really are. A twig on the ground could appear as a log blocking the road in front of you. A tall tree could appear to be much smaller than it really is. This is where the core of fairy tale myth comes from and when we read about giants and dwarfs. Not some long lost race of humans that the Smithsonian is covering up. That's fiction and myth. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Tiny Tim, Jack and the Beanstalk. Are you starting to wake up yet? That's why the Bible has giants in it, because the Bible is the greatest psychedelic fairy tale ever told. Getting back to Asgard. Next, we learn about what sounds exactly like the Greek creation story of mankind growing up from the fungus in the ground. Next, after this, the gods enthroned themselves in their seats and held judgment and called to mind, whence the dwarves had quickened in the mold and underneath in the earth, even as do maggots in flesh. The dwarves had first received shape and life in the flesh of Ymir and were then maggots, but by decree of the gods had become conscious with the intelligence of men and had human shape, and nevertheless they dwell in the earth and in stones. Lastly, we learn about Mimir's well. This part is key. But under the root which turns toward the rhyme giants is Mimir's well, wherein wisdom and understanding are stored, and he is called Mimir, who keeps the well. He is full of ancient lore, since he drinks of the well from the Galarhorn. Thither came Allfather and craved one drink of the well, but he got it not until he had laid his eye in pledge. So says Volupsa, all know I Odin, where the eye thou hidden, in the wide-renowned well of Mimir. The single eye, the wisdom, and the well all have special meaning in mushroom mythology as we've seen. The Amanita muscaria only grows under conifers, so the presents only appear under trees like pine trees, which is why we bring one in the house every winter and put gifts under it for our friends and family. But you can't just eat them freshly picked. They are a meal in Siberia. Lots of people eat them fresh, but that's because you won't get high unless you dry them first. So to dry them, you need a slow dry, like a warmth from a fireplace, maybe. Why not put them in some stockings, then, above the fireplace to dry? 
Siberia is famous for their reindeer, and reindeer love to eat the Amanita muscaria. It's probably their favorite food. One would imagine maybe they get high too. Do reindeer fly? Maybe. Do you ever see reindeer in the sky on the eve of December 24th? Europe is also famous for interesting entrances to some of their castles, palaces, and even some inns. The mushroom symbolism is undeniable, but at the same time, it goes mostly unrecognized as that because the mind hasn't been directed to that perspective. Who built all these wonderful places where we see all this elaborate mushroom design? Many castles and palaces of Europe were built by the Knights Templar, the keeper of the mushroom flame. They were soldiers for Christ early on and carried the red shield. This was the original incarnation of the King of Jerusalem. They were protector families that were eliminated by the Catholic Church along with the Albigensians and the Cathars. These families had to go underground to escape the wrath of the Church. Eventually we see these families spring up again in the societies of the Rosicrucians under Queen Elizabeth around 1600. These societies spread the gospel of the mushroom but still under some guise of secrecy due to the power at the time that the Church still had. The church had then created the Jesuits in 1540, founded by Ignatius of Loyola, nicknamed God's Marines. They've been responsible for many of the assassinations of leaders of society worldwide ever since their inception. The marriage of Elizabeth to Frederick V took place in 1613, and the first Rosicrucian publications appeared the following year. It was also called the Militia Evangelica, similar to the Soldiers of Christ of the earlier Templars. These publications led to what we now call the Age of Enlightenment or the Age of Reason. Thomas Paine wrote The Age of Reason, a quote from Paine, Belief in cruel God makes a cruel man. Paine also stated, In deism, our reason and our belief are happily united. Lastly, Paine also said, He that rebels against reason is a real rebel, but he that in defense of reason rebels against tyranny has a better title to defender of the faith than King George III. Thomas Paine was a founding father and a Mason. The founding fathers were all Freemasons who were descended in philosophy from the Rosicrucians. They were deists who believed in God but not the dogmatic doctrines of the church. They founded the country's constitution to safeguard the people against the tyranny of the monarchy but also more importantly the tyranny of the Catholic Church. They gave us freedom from religion but also freedom of religion which means we would have the right to use magic mushrooms, cannabis, and herbal sacraments for our spirituality and religious purposes. Don't believe me? See for yourself the Phrygian cap of liberty worn by the revolutionaries, the Liberty Pole, the Statue of Liberty holding the torch of enlightenment. Thomas Jefferson was quoted as saying, I have examined all the known superstitions of the world and I do not find in our particular superstition of Christianity one redeeming feature. They are all alike founded on fables and mythology. Also, Christianity neither is nor ever was part of the common law. And lastly, man, once surrendering his reason, has no remaining guard against absurdities the most monstrous, and like a ship without rudder is the sport of every wind, with such person's gullibility which they call faith, takes the helm from the hand of reason, and the mind becomes a wreck. John Adams was quoted as saying, The United States is not a Christian nation any more than it is a Jewish or a Mohammedan nation. This concludes the presentation titled, You Can't Unsee It, Episode 11, Santa Claus, Secret Societies, and the American Revolution. For more information on this subject, visit ancientpsychedelia.com and check out the free online version of the book, Ancient Psychedelia, Alien Gods and Mushroom Goddesses. Thanks for watching. One last thing I should mention, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me in my work, here are several ways you can do that. It does help tremendously, and I really appreciate it.